Hello, today we're going to be talking about how to install and configure DNS in a Windows Server 22 environment. DNS, also known as Domain Name System, is a network service used to resolve host names to IP addresses. So there's some things we're going to be talking about today in review. For example, we're going to cover why DNS is required for Active Directory to function. We're going to talk about some of the use cases on deploying DNS in your environment. In addition, we'll talk about primary and secondary servers to build a redundant infrastructure. We'll take a look at forward and lookup zones and talk a little bit about the zone transfers between DNS servers. In this video series, we've been building a network as we've been going along. We have two domain controllers, server A and server B, and today we're going to be adding DNS server server C. DNS server server C has an IP address of 192.168.1.10. It's already domain joined and we're ready to install the DNS service. Once we install the DNS service, we will go through the configuration and we'll set it up to transfer zones from either server A or server B. That'll allow Windows 10 to have more than one server that it can talk to with regards to DNS. Let's jump into the demonstration and start that configuration. We're gonna start this demonstration by taking a look at server A. As you saw in the diagram, server A is our domain controller for the domain called domain.local. It's already running DNS as well too. Today we're going to be second, setting up a secondary DNS. But let's jump into the server and take a look at its configuration. I'm going to sign in with the domain administrator account. I'll take a quick look first at Active Directory users and computers. As you can see here in this domain, I already have server A and server B as domain controllers. If I click on the computer's container, I can see that my client 10 is a Windows 10 machine and I can also see that server C is a domain joined server. Server C is not a domain controller. Let's go ahead and take a look at server C. I'm gonna sign into server C. I'll sign in as the domain administrator account. This, dom this server is domain joined. This is the first time that I log in using this account, so a profile will need to be created for me. From server manager, I'm gonna go ahead and on the left side, click local server so I can take a quick look at its configuration. You can clearly see here that the computer name is server C. It is part of a domain already called domain.local, and it's been assigned an IP address of 192.168.1.10. What, what server C doesn't have as yet is the DNS server service. We're going to go ahead and install that. I'm going to click on Manage, Add Roles and Features. Before you begin, some general information about the following tasks that need to be completed. Make sure you have a strong administrator password on your account. Make sure that you have a static IP set on this system. It's very important for our DNS systems to have static IP addresses. And of course, always make sure that you have the latest Windows security updates installed on your machine. I'll click next to continue. We're gonna do a role-based or feature-based installation. Let's click next. In this case, this local server only knows about itself. So I'm going to go ahead and select server C. This is the server that we want to make a change on. Click next. We're going to install the DNS server service on this machine. Notice that additional features are recommended to be installed. We'll click add features. Also notice that there are no other rules on this server. This is not an Active Directory domain controller, although it's very common on an internal server that you want to run DNS on that will be servicing internal zones to also be an Active Directory domain controller. That is the case with server A and server B. Both of the servers are running Active Directory domain services and they're also DNS servers as well. In this case, we're gonna set up a standalone DNS server. I'm gonna click Next. There are no other features to install. I'll click Next. Some important things to note before you proceed. This particular DNS server is not being installed on a domain controller. You have to consider how you'll be replicating DNS data between other DNS servers. In this case, not being a domain controller 
will require a manual configuration for the zone transfers. If you want to have your DNS zones installed within Active Directory, then you'll need to install the DNS role on an Active Directory domain controller. Again, the purpose of this video is to show you how to set up a standalone DNS server. We'll click Next. And we'll click Install. This installation should take um, a minute or two. Okay, the installation succeeded on server C. We're ready to proceed. So we'll go ahead and close this window. Now we can launch the DNS Manager tool. I'll click on Tools and locate DNS. I'll minimize Server Manager in the background so we have a better view. So in this case, Server C was installed as a standalone DNS server. You'll notice that this server has no four lookup zones. It has a very basic configuration. If you want this DNS server to participate along with other DNS servers in your internal network, the next step would be is to set up a forward lookup zone on this system. Before we proceed with creating a forward lookup zone, let's take a look at the zone file that's already running on server A. I'll launch the DNS console on server A. Notice that server A has two forward lookup zones, one called underscore msdcs.domain.local and another one called domain.local. It just so happens that server A is a domain controller running DNS. So I'm going to right click domain.local so we can take a look closer at the properties of this zone. You can see here in the general tab that the status of this zone is running and it's an Active Directory integrated type of zone. The replication is to all DNS servers in this domain. So because this zone file is stored on, in an Active Directory partition, replication would be automatic for other DNS servers that are running as domain controllers as well. If I click on this change button, you can see more information about the replication. So by default here, this zone would be replicated to other DNS servers running on domain controllers. Server C is not a domain controller at this time, so we wouldn't have that zone replicated automatically. The preferred type of zone is Active Directory integrated. You get a lot of more benefit and security when your zone files are integrated with Active Directory. But there are many instances and use cases of why you would not want to store a DNS zone in Active Directory. For example, you might want to have a DNS server providing services at a remote site, maybe a small office that's not located in the central location. You also might want to deploy DNS to host zones that service your internet clients. Those, of course, would not be in installed on an Active Directory integrated zone. So we're going to allow the zone file, domain.local, to be transferred to server C. So let's click on Zone Transfers tab. So we're going to check Allow Zone Transfers. And by default, you can see that it's set to any server. We're going to set it only to the following servers. I'll click Edit. And let's go ahead and type in the IP address of that server, 192.168.1.10. I'm going to click OK. And now we've given permission for server C to pull a zone transfer. Let's go back to server C. On server C, I'm going to create a four lookup zone. So I'm going to right click and say new zone and go through the wizard. I'll click next. I'm going to set up a secondary zone. A secondary zone is a copy of a zone that exists on another server. In this case, Storing the zone in Active Directory is not available. That's because this is not a domain controller. I'll click Next. The name of the zone that I want to transfer is domain.local. I'll hit Next. And type in the address of the server that hosts this zone file, 192.168.1.1. .1. Let me click Next. And Finish. This server will copy over the zone file. Now that we've completed that step, I'll click on domain.local, and you can see here that the zone along with its records have been transferred over. If I right click domain.local and your properties, you're taking a look at the general tab. It looks a little bit different than what we saw on server A. This time, instead of it saying Active Directory Integrated, you can see that the type of, of DNS server is a secondary. It's holding a secondary copy of that zone file. This zone file, again, is not stored in Active Directory Integrated Zone. If 
for you to be able to replicate and store the zone file in an Active Directory integrated zone, Server C would have to be a domain controller. If I click on the Start of Authority tab, you'll see that everything is grayed out because on a secondary zone, I am, this is only a read-only copy. I'm not able to make changes on this zone file. For example, if I cancel and I right-click domain.local, you'll notice that I don't have the ability to create any new records. All the records have to be created on the primary server. So if I jump back to server A, if I create another record, I'm going to right-click domain.local and say, for example, new host record. Let's just type in the word test. So I want test to resolve to 192.168. Dot 1.50. This is just an example. Notice that my test record has been created in this zone file. Okay, aside from the test record, we also want to make sure we add server C as a, as a name server. So we'll need to update the name server tab. I'll go back to the start of authority, and I'm going to go to the name servers tab, and I want to add server C as a name server. This ensures that server C is participating as an authoritative DNS server for this domain. I'll click Add. I'm going to type in server C dot domain dot local. And we want an IP address for this server, 192.168.1.10. We'll click OK. Now we show that server A, B, and C are all authoritative DNS servers for this domain. On zone transfer, I now have an option to either leave it to allow the zone transfer to only occur to this server, which is the 192.168.10, which just happens to be server C, or I can switch it over to the only to the servers listed on the name servers tab. This way I can control the zone transfers through the name servers tab instead. I'm fine with either of these options, so I'll go ahead and just, I'll leave the second option and hit OK. Now, keep in mind that anytime you want to force a secondary server to be notified, you can click the Notify button. I'll say Servers listed in the tab and click OK. Let me click OK to close this. And Server C should receive a notification that there's been an update in the zone file. Now this is not required every time you make a change to the zone file. Matter of fact, on the start of authority, when we, when we look at the different options, we have refresh intervals and retry intervals. These are the settings that the DNS servers will follow with regards to updating the zone, and if they have an error where they're unable to access a zone file, they'll retry, in this case, every 10 minutes. And if they're unsuccessful after a day, then they'll mark the zone as expired and unavailable. We'll click OK, and we'll swap, switch over to the server C. Let me refresh the zone. And you can see now that server C successfully completed a zone transfer. This test record is now listed in the zone file. So what does this do for our clients on the network? Let's take a look at our Windows 10 machine and see what we can do to take advantage of having multiple DNS servers on our domain. I'll sign in as the domain administrator account. Let's take a look at the networking properties. I'll just go to Control Panel, Network and Internet, I'll go to Network and Sharing Center, and I'll click on this network interface. We'll go to Properties, IP version 4, Properties. At this moment, my Windows 10 machine is on a manual IP configuration. Notice that the only DNS server it's pointing to at this moment is server A, 192.168.1.1. Of course, server B is also a DNS server, so I could put 192.168.1.2. In addition, I can click on the Advanced button, and I can add additional DNS servers. If I want to add a third one, I can do that from the Advanced settings. 192.168.1.10 in this case. This will provide the client at least three DNS servers to contact in the event that any of the DNS servers are in a failed state. This provides additional redundancy for the Windows client. It's very unlikely that all three DNS servers would be down at any given time on the network. Click OK. Close and close. You can also verify these settings from the command prompt. I'll type in CMD and we'll do an IP config slash all. Here you can see in, in your IP configuration that the DNS server is listed as 192.168.1.1 1 
1.2, and 1.10. Again, servers 1.1 and 1.2 are Active Directory domain controllers that are also running DNS. Server 10, we decided to set it up as a standalone server, and its IP address is 192.168.1.10. In this case, the client can talk to any of the three DNS servers and have a reliable DNS service. Well, that concludes our video today about how to add an additional DNS server to our network environment. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again.